So this is a Casio CZ101. I'm opening it back up to repair uh, some damage that happened when I plugged in the wrong power supply. It does not have a reverse voltage protection. When you're when you're taking these apart, just showing you there, there's a lot of screws. Okay, obviously the the circuit board has quite a few screws around it, not just the corners but also some in the middle um, of the boards. You've got all these little screws here, which are underneath the keys. Oh, and there's some hot glue to get rid of. Uh, there's various uh, ground cables plugged in or screwed in in multiple places as well. And you really got to get all these things out in order to be able to work on it. Um, this is the pitch wheel, the uh, slider. Um, I don't really have to take the power button out, I don't think but it might just make it easier. So keep that in mind. And uh, by taking out all these screws, you get to the uh, contact board for all the keys, okay? And I gotta, I gotta take a look at a couple of these keys. They're sagging in the middle here, and I don't know why they're sagging. Uh, I don't know if I left something out or if something got cracked during reassembly, but I wanna try to fix that. Also, I noticed that the headphone jack um, it's very noisy, so you plug into it and there's a, a high level of hum, even though the regular audio from it is, is fine. Okay, so I fixed the key sag problem. You can see my keys are nice and straight now, where there were three in the middle that were sagging down. Uh, the fix is to make sure you've got pressure. I still got some more screws to put in. But make sure you've got good pressure on the circuit board. So the circuit board itself, uh, that the uh, has the key contacts on it, was not held in tight enough. But that's because of this this cardboard, you know, grounding or insulation strip um, not being pushed down tight enough because the little screw heads don't really do a great job ripping cardboard right and pulling it in tight so the fix is to put in washers okay so the washers will help distribute the pressure around to hold things in nicely and then your keys will not sag the other thing to watch out for is if you don't have the uh, key contact strips which you know are under here you can't see them right now actually no they're down well <laughs> under here <laughs> They, uh, if they're not in perfect, if there's any slight misalignment, you will get a key that will drop down um, into the, the cavity left by having one of those little plastic uh, switches, rubber switches not in the right place. So, on to the next thing. I happen to have two OLED displays that are the perfect displays for upgrading this keyboard. I hear they're dropping the replacements, so I've got to take out this section here to get to the display. And then it's really just a question of what color do I want. I believe I have green and white. I've already taken some screws out, so I'm removing this. You have to slide this one out. Um, I think it only comes out one way because these little posts get in the way, right? So once that's out of the way, there's an extra screw to come out. Now this circuit board is almost out of the way, but look at all these ribbons and things. The Casio's sort of, I don't know if famous is the right word, but I've often found little extra hidden screws underneath things on funny angles that make it hard to uh, get at what you want to get at. So the display... You can see all those colored wires there. That's got something to do with the display, right? So, what is in my way? I don't know yet. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So it's really about the fold in some of these cables that's the problem. So, here we are. Another layer. This is the one, two three layers of circuit boards so as you can see here it looks like 
And there's that metal bracket. See that metal bracket? That also has to do with the uh, display holding assembly. Actually, that is the main thing. I think I can avoid removing all these other screws and just focus right here on the screws holding this bracket in and then pull out the display unit. That's what we're going to uh, try right now. Okay, so I took out these two screws and a word of warning here, they're short. Uh, the Casio uses mm, the longest screws are holding the case together and then medium screws are everywhere on every circuit board and all these all these screws but the screws holding this metal frame in for the display and that's the display by the way that's the back of it they are short so don't make a mistake of uh, you know using the wrong ones hey magnet so I'm keeping these screws in a separate bin. Speaking of the bin, I'm using Love Some Tea. Whole Leaf Tea from Thailand. Great stuff. Great stuff. Find it online. Love Some Tea. Okay, here we go. What do we got? What do we got? We've got... Oh, look at that. We've got a display. Okay. And there's little metal twisty clips <laughs> twisty clips I just made that up okay so here's the new display module and it is a perfect fit okay which is very nice of course however it's a problem I don't know how big a problem yet I'm looking at all of these penetrations And there's 16 on this board. And the old board has 14. Hmm. So what is the story here? So this part was recommended uh, by some folks on Facebook. I think I got the right one. So I will contact them. So I confirmed through Facebook on some folks who have done the same repair in the, uh, well, the Retro Gear LCD Display Club. <laughs> I mean, really, really smart dudes, some serious experts there on displays. Um, you just ignore these these two contacts here. All right, you have to pay particularly good attention when putting the new board back in to the uh, little bracket here. So notice I have it underneath the bracket at the top there where the screw holes. Um, these holes down here are not used. It just holds it in this slot, okay? And uh, naturally, don't forget to take off the plastic wrap, but I'm leaving that to the last possible second. I'm in the final reassembly and getting ready to test the new uh, Vichy OLED that I've installed. I just wanted to give you one further tip on reassembly, but this ribbon cable for the power switch. Um, it's really long, which makes sense when you're disassembling it, but you gotta figure out where to put it when you push everything back together again. And if you tuck it underneath the circuit board, that's a mistake, because that's gonna put pressure on the circuit board and it's gonna cause the uh, power jack <laughs> to to misalign with the hole in the case so that your power plug will not stay in tight. Uh, so don't put this under the board. It will cause a little bowing of the board. It's, it's tough enough to you know, make the board bend a little. 